Live from Shadowmere Studios, except it's not Shadowmere Studios. It's the Talkie Box Podcast, Season 2 Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. Well, I won't do it again. Okay, cool. <laughs> Glad we settled that. <laughs> what happened to your fancy notebook with all the terms? Uh, it's at, it's still in the studio. No, it's retired. It's we're not doing that season two anymore. No. Oh, we're not doing that. No. Oh, you got. Why you call the shot? You have to upgrade. <laughs> it's season two. Everything's supposed to be better. Bigger, better. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like we're hitting people's. We're doing up. we're doing a shorter podcast. <laughs> Anyway. Shorter, not as good. We'll see. Um, <laughs> new year, new us. Yeah. I'm your host, Dave. This is Kate <laughs> and Jeremy. Mm-hmm. And there are uh, names and stuff on the big-ass whiteboard. Um, yeah. It's been a while since we've done one of these. Very long yeah, time. A lot of... Uh, Feels unfamiliar. A lot of life going on over the past couple months. And uh, we haven't been able to really get scheduling is a bitch. Yeah. Trying to get everything together, but also our entire studio is currently under construction, yep. as is much of our house. So that's that's true. Yeah. So we're making do with what we got. Right now we got a library. Uh, thanks to Hampton Park Library for letting us use this this room with its uh, with its echo. <laughs> He's really not happy about the echo. It's like it's like being in an auditorium. It's almost like and we've heard echoes important. about the echoes. <laughs> Except we're not important. <laughs> so. Welcome to our TED Talk. <laughs> anyway, so like. On why you matter. Like I said, it's been several months <laughs> since we did one of these, which means we've had lots of time to prepare for this, and then we didn't write anything down. But. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I know that, you know, there's been multiple movies and TV shows and stuff that, that have come through. Video games. Video games. And so we have a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, one of them I know Jeremy is very excited to, to get to is uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Oh my goodness. No, just anything Spider-Man. <laughs> like the last half of 2018 was just Spider-Man. Yeah. And there's so much to go into for that. Right. Because we had, in September, we had the game for the PlayStation that came out. Mm -hmm. And that was phenomenal. Like I've heard nothing but good things. I don't have a PlayStation, so I haven't, I haven't it played was, it, but... I, I have a bad habit of not finishing games mm -hmm. because like, you know, I'll t I, I can't sit there. I can't like play for hours and hours and hours. Like I get kind of burnt out. I need to switch it up and mm -hmm. then I just never end up coming back to some of them. But with like Spider-Man, it was one of the first games in a long time that I just sat there and was like, no, I have to finish <laughs> this. Like the story has just drawn me in like mm -hmm. that well written and it played played amazingly no pun intended ah. <laughs> and it was like the voice acting was very good like okay. who they got was like kind of questionable so like at first like because they cast yuri lowenthal as spider-man mm. and my friend was not gonna think that would work it did he does a really great spider-man who else is, what else or if done? you've ever watched who what else has that guy done yuri yeah basically like He's just one of those voice actors who's just in things. Okay. So, like, he ever played Fallout New Vegas. He's your character. Oh. Um, he played the adult Ben 10. Just stuff like that. Like, that's okay. just him. And then, like, um, you know, just other people they got. Like, they got, like, a lot of good people. Like, um, you know, some people might not care as much about this as I do. But Mung Dole from Chowder was the vulture. <laughs> um... The guy who voiced Rigby from Adventure or regular show, he yeah. was um, Doctor Octavius. Okay. Now that one was like, you wouldn't think that would work, but right. it did. Rigby was a raccoon, right? Yeah, Rigby was the little raccoon. Okay. Guy. And just um, you know, stuff like that. Like, it was just all in all a fantastic game. Like, right. Easily one of my favorite games of last year. Okay. So. Like, like I said, I've heard nothing but good things mm -hmm. about it, and I, and I would like to play it. I might have to get it and just play it on your PlayStation. Um, I, w I would also like to play it. We can split it. We can go have these. Yeah. In the game. I mean, I could just let you borrow it. Okay, so, we can do that too. An option. <laughs> I do. Um, so, uh, but also into the Spider Verse, like I oh, said, yeah. which came out uh, December. In December. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Kate and I saw that with uh, with, uh, Jackie. with Jackie. 
and and uh, it was fantastic. It was a phenomenal, well done animated. I can honestly experience. say, like, it was probably like I don't think I've ever been that excited for a movie, mm -hmm. and I left the theater like blown away. Yeah, and that's very rare because like I, like I think I'm a little bit more generous with movies because like I just like watching movies. Right, I'm the same way. So like I don't you know like when someone's like really hating on something, you know, it has to be like really honestly like noticeable or bad for me to like kind of agree with that. Mm. I don't know, I'm pretty critical. Yes, you are. So, <laughs> you know, like the fact that like I'm sitting like I, you know, every time like I would see anything new about this movie, mm. it would just make me even more and more excited. Right. And then, you know, it gets to the point where it's like, is it going to live up to this? Mm. And then I walked out of that movie and I'm like, I want to go see this again. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. Because, like, everything about it was great. Like, it was very visually pretty. Mm -hmm. It sounded great. It was, like, had a really nice story for what they did because they took elements from the comics. Right. But, like, still changed it up enough to um, be something new. Yeah. The, I, the, the few things that I didn't like were, were um, I didn't like the voice of the Kingpin. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought they made him too, like, New York thug. And I've always had this vision of him being very stoic, very stoic and proper, right? And and not just not that voice. It just didn't seem to fit for me. Um, everything else I thought was fantastic. Well, I think it it fits for the kingpin they were going for, because like yeah, like in um, for Daredevil, you know, he's that very proper, right. stoic one, but he's still got that gravelly kind of. Yeah, you know, like this one just seemed like they were just going for kind of like a thug. Yeah, because like he didn't seem very like he was trying to present himself in a nice way, mm. really, except for like maybe once or twice in the movie. So sure. the rest of it, he was just like crime boss. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, we went and saw that with Jackie, and then immediately after we saw Aquaman. Yeah, and. Was like Kate's Kate's reaction to those movies was really fun to watch because she really liked Spider-Man yeah. and really hated Aquaman. <laughs> I just I don't I feel like with and I feel like and I've said it about DC before, I'll say it again with the exception of Wonder Woman, they just put too much into one movie mm. and there's too much going on and I feel like it's almost always information overload in some areas and then there's not like they're, they're either there's too much or not enough mm. like there was just too much plot but not enough enough meaning meaningful dialogue or really really great effects in one area and then like uh black black manta black manta his suit literally looked like something out of like a 90s power ranger show but his suit was the exact same that's, as like the other people in the movie that's kind of black that manta black. though but it was just terrible and inconsistent all the way through. And logically, the story just didn't make sense to me. Maybe it was the screenwriting, but I wasn't really impressed by Jason Momoa's acting. Mm. I know that that's an unpopular opinion, but... It's a very unpopular opinion, considering it's made more than every other DC movie that's ever been made. Yeah, because I, I heard it's just been <laughs> Did it destroyed. outbeat Wonder Woman? Yeah, it cleared a billion. I don't it, see it, how. It, didn't I, it just beat like the Dark Knight or something, or it's on I, track I think to beat the Dark Knight? I think it's like right, right there, as of now. I don't. I'm not I sure. See, it, that's so but, surprising to me because I thought it was terrible. Yeah. I literally took like a 15 minute nap during the movie and woke up and I feel like I didn't miss a thing. <laughs> that's how much. That's another thing. There's just so much extraneous detail because mm -hmm. they just put too. Like there's just so much going on. The only problems I had with the movie were. Uh, there was some pretty clunky dialogue, yeah. which was just, it, it wasn't terrible, it was just the, those like contrived cliche things mm -hmm. that people say in, in certain situations in movies. And then uh, the character Mira, played by Amber Heard, I believe, mm -hmm. um, is, you know, she spent virtually her entire life underwater, but her outfit has heels, which I thought was very strange. Um, <laughs> Otherwise, I actually really enjoyed the movie. I had no problems with it. Um, but like you, I'm really hard to... I, yeah. I'm, a, I'm very easy to please when it comes to movies. Uh, it's very rare that, that I watch a movie and I'm like, this is terrible. Jackie um, actually had the same 
Yeah, experience. Jackie had a lot of the same, like... That I did. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, I was having a great time. So. Although, <laughs> with DC's track record, mm. you can just go in there, like, not expecting anything. <laughs> so, like, if it does even better than, like, just... If it's an all right movie, mm -hmm. you're already like, oh, hey, my expectations were blown away. Yeah. Good job, DC. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, Wonder Woman, I think, I think surprised a lot of people in how great it was. I think it surprised everyone. Um, and, and it was. It was a fantastic movie. And Aquaman, I certainly don't think surpassed that. But I think it was, Not of the me. other DC movies I've seen, I thought Aquaman was actually really, really good, especially compared to Man of Steel. That's and Suicide Squad. Better. I haven't seen Justice League, so I don't know. I haven't seen but. Justice League either. Which is another thing that weirded me out a little bit. Um, I get, Once again, I'm like a huge Marvel lover. They mm. can do no wrong to me. Um, but something that's iffy to me is like, you know, we have Aquaman after Justice League. Mm. Whereas I feel like, I, I, you know, for the most part, with Avengers, you had those individual plot lines yeah. building up to the Avengers. So you already went into the Avengers movie with a full kind of understanding of what your cast was going to look like. You were just really kind of waiting to see how they would play off of each other. So even if you weren't, you know, someone who read the comics or grew up with the shows or something, you, by the time Avengers came out, you basically knew right. what to expect. Where. Justice League, like you have the the origin story for Aquaman after Justice League. Well, this wasn't his origin. Like it did have his origin in it, but but these events happened after Justice League did, and and it's actually something I had said long ago when they were starting to talk about Justice League is that when if you're going to do that, you have to do the opposite of what Avengers did. You can't like Avengers started out having their individual movies and then put them all together into Avengers. Justice League was going to have to reverse that. And they, they, you know, they did a couple of movies early and then hit Justice League and now they're showing us about these other characters. And I think that's that's what they had to do to, to really set themselves apart. Now, granted, a lot of their movies aren't good. So, you know, that, that, that kind of hurts you. That's what's so upsetting what too, thing. is because like, all their movies had so much incredible potential. Mm -hmm. Like, if they had just gotten, you know, like your Green Lantern, had been done right yeah that would have been one of my favorite things ever absolutely because i love the idea and the character of the green lantern because mm -hmm. he's just so like it's a space cop with the ability to basically do whatever he wants as long as he's you know a strong like right. real powered individual but like they just didn't they did not do yeah. it well like ryan reynolds could have been a really awesome hal jordan but like no. the way i think he could have ryan reynolds could have been a great kyle rayner um, Kyle, Kyle Rayner was a comic book artist and, and a very funny and imaginative guy and I think that would have been a great role for, for Ryan Reynolds okay. Hal Jordan is supposed to be kind of like this stoic dude and that's not Ryan Reynolds no, yeah. um, but, but I agree with you Like Green Lantern is probably my favorite DC character because like he's limited only by his imagination. Like he can do anything he wants pretty much. It's very inspiring. And I think it's really cool. That's like one of the things like, I like about also like, like like about the Green Lanterns is like with you know the past couple years there's been a lot of like people trying to change up characters with you know their origin stories or like maybe just try to pass like this say like this character is now this person instead of it being this person but with like a Green Lantern you can just throw in a new Green Lantern yeah which it's they've not, done in the comics numerous times. They keep doing it. And, right. I, and it doesn't and throw off the yeah, continuity of the work at all. Right. It's like adding a new Green Lantern is not going to go and replace Hal Jordan or, you know, Jon Stewart. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like, okay. Welcome to the family. Yeah, what's yeah. up, dude? You know, and it's like... It's this new story. And it, there's what you could do with that. Like, I think that's really amazing, mm -hmm. too, because it's like each Lantern also has their individual, you know, things. Like, my favorite, he's Jon Stewart. Mm -hmm. His, like, he's been described, you know, he's got, like, the most well-built constructs because he puts so much attention into the detail and the effort. Like, if he makes, like, an airplane, it's going to have every individual part and be built like an airplane. Okay. But then, like, other lanterns are just, like, you know, uh, I don't know. He's, they're one of the newer ones. I don't know who it is because my friends talked about him. But, like, 
their constructs are more fluid and like kind of tentacly, mostly just as like weapons to kind of like fight off close range. Like they don't really go into, you know, building these elaborate okay. constructs that there's like simple designs, you know, to help them get out of like a situation. Right. And it's like, that's cool. Cause like you've got that contrast, you know, yeah. between super detailed and, you know, effective versus like effective to get, you know, to save you. Yeah. That's one of the things I like about Kyle Rayner was that, that when he would make these constructs, they, they, he would make like fantasy creatures and stuff. Um, you know, dragons and, and all kinds of alien monsters mm -hmm. or whatever to in, to help him out. So, yeah, um, the, the Green Lantern was always a, a really cool idea and a really cool thing and some, and they just kind of, it was terrible. They pooped on it. <laughs> took a big old shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And now, so now we have the Marvel Netflix series that all two of them? keep getting <laughs> canceled. Um, Jessica Jones still going strong. Jessica Jones is still it's, still there, and the Punisher is still and around. That's it. But chances are, since Punisher season two just came out, it's probably about to get the axe, just like all the others. Um, and the same thing is probably going to happen when Jessica Jones season three comes out. Um, the reasoning being that. Disney is starting up its own streaming service. I heard, or I thought that they weren't going to be on that. That's I, also what I've heard. That, but that this was all Netflix's idea of um, canceling these shows. I haven't heard that. I, that's what I heard. I heard that they, um, the Marvel people mm. didn't like. They had no like part in that. It was Netflix mm. pulling the plug on these things. That's weird because yeah. they are doing fantastic, especially like, um, like I feel like Iron Fist. Season two did way better than the first season. Um, Luke Cage left with a pretty big cliffhanger, and, and they could have done a lot with that. Um, Punisher, season, Punisher season two was really good. I, I just I actually I stayed up till that. six in the morning the other day, um, finishing season two. That's what you were that doing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then and then Daredevil had three seasons, four if you count Defenders, because that was really just a Daredevil season. Um, <laughs> and it, but it it also did really well. So it surprised it would surprise me if, for either of the companies to really cancel it, but if Marvel does intend to put it on the Disney streaming service, I would love to see it, you know that stuff happen. It was surprising, I yeah, because like I kind of like, it wasn't that surprising for like you know Iron Fist or Luke Cage or mm -hmm. the Defenders, like because those were always the weaker ones. Right. So like when they got you know canceled, I'm like okay, I mean I guess that makes sense. But then, like, you know... When they canceled Daredevil. Yeah, like, I was not... Yeah. It's like, that came out of nowhere. Right. Because, like, Daredevil... That was personal? <laughs> Daredevil, like, around when Daredevil came out, isn't that, like, kind of when Marvel started doing, like, as much of their original... I mean, not Marvel, Netflix started doing as much of their original stuff? Like, isn't that, like, kind of... When uh, they saw how well that did, that they kind of started producing more and more. You're probably right. I think they had a few things. I think uh, I think they did have a few things out before that, but um, they I had think a few from mm, that yeah. time that did really well. One of them was Daredevil. One of them was also Orange Is the New Black. That's that true, was yeah. one of their first originals, and it's done amazingly well. Yeah, despite getting really bored in season two, um, or at least I feel it did. That's why I stopped watching it. But but yeah, Daredevil. Obviously, did very well, and yes, since then, Netflix has been putting out just a crap ton of stuff. Um, not all of it's great. Not all of it's great. No, but yeah, no, but there but is, some of it's been pr yeah, a pretty yeah. big deal. Like the ma making a murderer was was huge. Um, the Ted Bundy. The Ted Bundy thing that's out right now. Yet, um, chilling. Is is really big, and people were all upset about uh, people calling him hot. Um, which he was, he was like, an attractive that guy. Was, that's how that's, he murdered people. That's how he was so um, convincing, is, yeah. you know. You know, when you're attractive and charming, people let their guard down. And also, I mean, you have to think of the time. He was one of our first serial killers on that level, and we didn't have the knowledge or the wherewithal to really combat that at the time. Mm. I haven't so. watched the show, so I don't know. Well, about it, but. was crazy to me, I did, mm -hmm. uh, is I, I knew a good bit about Ted Bundy. I mean, he's America's most infamous yeah. serial killer. So I, I'm sure, you know, by the time you've reached a certain age, everyone's heard of Ted Bundy in passing. But he escaped jail twice. And that is just impressive to me. Yeah. 
Um, so, like, at the point, because, like, in the way that they tell you in the show, like, they, by the point that they had captured him, um, it was just for the kidnapping. Like, that's how he got caught, ultimately, was he had tried to kidnap this woman, mm. and she had managed to get away. Okay. And um, by that point in time, they were able to kind of trace him and link him to all these uh, bodies that were found mm. in his dumping site. And so they had already at this point suspected him, like they didn't know for sure, but they had, they had him for kidnapping and they had suspected him of committing at least like, I think it was like seven murders. Didn't know for sure. Just like seven. But they were keeping him in like a minimum security prison and literally letting him walk around and stuff because they were like, oh yeah, that's fine. You know, he's depressed. He can't like, I don't right. give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit if the murderer is depressed. Like, so he's Was it, was it the 60s? Yeah. Yeah. So the first time he escaped, he was literally like, he was walking from the jailhouse to, I guess, where the court proceedings were in the mm -hmm. jailhouse. If, and he literally just excused himself, went to the restroom and like walked out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm gonna go now, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna take <laughs> off this yeah. board. So, yeah. and he was only gone for like six days and they, they caught him and it was you know, a big deal. Like, mm. I don't know. Um, but the second time he did, he literally, I, this one's a little more creative, I, I take my hat off to him for this one, he starved himself so that he could get through a ceiling vent on like his top bunk, like he piled all his books that he had, mm. and it became like drastically underweight, managed, I guess they had in this particular jailhouse, the jailer was living in an apartment of the jailhouse, mm. so he went through the ceiling, somehow got to like a storage room, used that to get into the jailer's apartment, stole some of his clothes and just walked out the jail door. Wow. And he was gone for, I want to say it was a, like a month or more, and he managed to get down to Florida and kill three more people. Damn. From wherever he was staying. This guy was committed to murder. Yep. I gotta get out of here and kill more people. <laughs> the port follow my I got passion. stuff going on. <laughs> wherever it may lie. <laughs> oh. Mm. Murderers, man. What are you gonna do? Um, I think, so we definitely talked about, um, Sorry, that was just a tangent. No, that's fine. We definitely talked about Infinity War, uh, before we had our hiatus. I don't think we ever talked about Ant-Man and Wasp. I think, uh, it came out while we were, yeah. you, you still haven't seen it? It's on Netflix now. It's on Netflix. I saw that, but I just... Have you seen it? Yeah. Okay. I haven't even seen all of it. So the let's, Ant -Man. let's do just all the spoilers we can. Um, there's this guy, he's called Ant-Man, spoiler. And there's this girl who was called Wasp. Spoilers. Oh my god. And, no, it was a, uh, it was another. What's next? Fun... Are you gonna say this is a Marvel movie? Was it like Indiana a heist Wars? movie similar to Blue? Sort of. Yeah. Not as much. Yeah, it's not. This was actually more of like a family movie. Okay. Um, in multiple ways. One, it was about the the family of um, trying to like fix and stuff. the family. Yeah, but it was also a very family friendly, fun movie. Also about Scott's family. So, family. Family. It's like we're watching a Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> <laughs> there was a race scene in it, basically. Yeah. So, I mean. There's some shrinking, some growing, some more shrinking. Lots of fun stuff. And then some, like, real big growing. Like, oh, yeah. we. But then, yeah, back down to, like, some real, real tiny shrinking. Mm hmm. All kinds of growing and shrinking. Oh. I think we actually did talk about this. Did we? In an oh. episode with Brander. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, there's not a lot, like, as much as I enjoyed the movie, there's not a lot to say about the movie. Um, it was a fun movie. I'm glad I saw it. Mm -hmm. I, think it I think it definitely brought a lot of, um, you know, a lot of more characters in and everything. I, do, I did see something recently where um, uh, whenever uh, Endgame comes out, Avengers Endgame, um, they want uh, Luis from Ant-Man to recap <laughs> Everything up I until that point, that. and it would be fantastic, just like he did in the first Ant-Man oh, movie. That would be perfect. Um, yeah, that would be fantastic to to see that. So I hope that that happens. Well, I think I, have, I actually saw a Marvel Facebook page post. <laughs> um, so there was this picture I saw, and there will be spoilers with like talking about this picture. Mm -hmm. It showed like a whole bunch of um, you know, like of all the people who have magic in mm -hmm. the MCU, so it showed like Scarlet Witch and right. Doctor Strange, and I think someone else, and then. Ant-Man. And it says only one of these um, Loki was the other one. Yeah, Loki. Yeah. It's like only one of these um, 
which able is, to spice, yeah, survive Thanos. <laughs> like they showed the picture of Scott when he's like vomiting out all the cars. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. And I love that. Like that's one of my that that yeah. was the best part of the movie is him doing his uh, magic Up tricks. Magic stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think it's. I think by now. Spoiling stuff from Infinity War is not that big a deal. Like, well, I mean, if you haven't seen it, you, I guess, are just not going to see it. Still, it's, um, you know, it's still nice to have a heads up. I get it. Um, so, with the MCU now, we have two, mo two more movies to look forward to. Or, well, one movie to look forward to, and then in game, but Captain Marvel. Captain um, Marvel! I know you're very excited about that. Oh that's, that's your girl. My God. Yeah. Yeah. It's surprising to me that, well, it's not. Um, but with all of, I was just at a Kapow the other day, mm. and with Captain Marvel's movie, they keep ordering comics and people keep buying them, but a lot of people don't know anything about her. Mm. Like, I was talking to this guy, oh God, and I have to say, like, I kind of don't like neckbeards. <laughs> and, like, people at comic book stores, for the reason that they just have, like, this superior knowledge complex. Right. Oh, you haven't read issue 32 of this, like, very, very elitist, con how dare you get out of my store? Yeah. It's kind of how it always feels. But, like, this guy was doing that, you know, like, he heard me mention that I like Captain Marvel, and he just, like, immediately started, like, pulled his dick out and just, like, waved trying, around. Trying to test you. Like, and... look at my knowledge, and he mentioned something about her, and it made me really happy that I was there in that moment, because... Was he, he was, wrong? He was very wrong. Yeah. <laughs> he was very, very, very wrong because he was like, yeah, um, oh, he was talking to me about Miss Marvel. He's like, oh, and I'm assuming, you know, you like Miss Marvel too. I was like, yeah, I love Miss Marvel, blah, 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 blah. And he mentioned something about Captain Marvel and uh, who she was before. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, you know, she was um, just Colonel Danvers when she inherited the captain marvel mantle and i was like no 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 she got her powers first I say, she was miss marvel and he was like no no miss marvel is a muslim i was like now miss marvel used to be a white girl named carol danvers yeah miss marvel passed her miss marvel title a lot like she was captain marvel what she did but her miss marvel title went to kamala khan mm. Uh, but originally, she was Miss Marvel. She was the first Miss Marvel because they were still making Captain Marvel, yeah. who was a man, and his comics didn't do too well. So around the same time that they uh, came out with Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and a few others, that's when they made the change Carol Danvers name. became Captain Marvel. Yeah. The ultimate universe, yeah. But she's led like a crazy life. She was binary at one point. Mm -hmm. She had her powers... Her binary powers taken away by Rogue. Just crazy stuff. Yeah. Lots of crazy stuff. And well, I'm very excited to see. The movie. I, I keep seeing trailers for the movie, and it looks very convoluted. It like, does. It kind of looks like her binary powers are being used. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm excited to see it, and uh, it looks like it's going to be great. I'm very happy to see um, Nick Fury as young Nick Fury. I'm like gonna go see it. Not Samuel L. Jackson's young Nick Fury, but Nick Fury. It's gonna happen, like, you know, to tie into Endgame. Mm. Like, I personally don't necessarily care about, like, her character. Like, I have nothing against her. I just, like, she's just not someone who seems interesting to right. me. But, like, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm excited to see, like, what's gonna happen for, like, Endgame and mm -hmm. stuff. But, like, you know. I will say, and I, it's hard for me to say because I love her a lot, mm -hmm. but I. Do you find it a bit strange that they decided to make her the most powerful person in the MCU? At the moment? Yeah. Or they're just hyping up that she's just got some crazy trick. Right. Because, I mean, she is powerful. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. She's extremely powerful. But I feel like there's other people equal to her in power, like Scarlet Witch, for instance. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's portrayed so mildly in the, in the movie compared to in the comics. Because when they introduced her in the MCU, they couldn't have her like her comic counterpart. Because at the time, they didn't have the X-Men. Yeah. <coughs> so like they had to make it to where it's just like some kind of something else, you know, to like mm -hmm. get by with that. Right. But like... Like a lot of people are thinking now, like after Endgame, I think she might get a power buff because like with all the talk about multiple dimensions or reset and stuff, mm. 
like that's how people think the X-Men are gonna be brought in. And so mm -hmm. like if they do that, then they could completely rewrite rewrite her to be mm -hmm. this you know, amazingly powerful thing. That she is. Yeah. Because yeah. Like, even now, like, I saw something that's like, while in um, Infinity War, she was trying to, you know, destroy Vision and then still holding off Thanos, like, by herself yeah. while having, like, some kind of emotional and mental breakdown. And, mm -hmm. like, she's doing all that. And, you know, she's still not as powerful as she could be. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a large part of it is her powers are tied to her emotions. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of times, you know, she she's very scared a lot and not enraged. And I think in the comics, that's when you really see her let loose is when she's just, you know, pissed like, off. I would argue she's just as powerful as Carol Danvers, maybe more. Um, I mean, like even with the characters they have introduced, yeah, like Hulk. In the comics now, Hulk's unkillable. Like he came back from the dead and refuses to die, <laughs> or. Even Spider-Man, because mm -hmm. um, there's sometimes he gets the cosmic, like some kind of cosmic power and just becomes this like Galactus level of, yeah. you know, power. And mm -hmm. like, he's gotten it two or three times and it's just, yeah, you got that and you got, mm -hmm. I guess Thor now, like, Thor's pretty. Thor's super powerful. Yeah. So what we have now is, is, you know, everything leading up to in-game and then in-game's gonna happen and then no fucking clue how that's gonna go. Well, aren't they? I forget the character's name, but they introduced another character in one of the clips. I want to say it was one of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock. Yeah. And isn't he extremely? I haven't yes, read his he's... comics, but I've seen I've him read just a... kind of make appearances here and there yeah. in the universe. I've read a very little bit about him, and I don't know if they're planning on introducing him in Captain Marvel or if they're waiting till in game. Yeah. But apparently, he is going to be a part of this. Isn't he just uh, like stupid levels of powerful? He's he's very powerful and he and he's what uh, he heads up what's called the Infinity Watch and it's this group of six people who guard the individual Infinity okay. Stones. And so my my ideas or my you know what I think is going to happen is that um, eventually you know they're going to Thanos is going to lose mm -hmm. and they're going to get the stones they're going to break them up and they're going to start the Infinity Watch. Uh, with him and then probably some of the other members of the MCU. I doubt they'll do who like the people who originally the Infinity Watch in the comics because it's like random people yeah. that they certainly haven't introduced. I'm mean, um, interested to see how this goes. Yeah, but I feel like at least one of the Guardians is going to get one. Um, probably, maybe, I mean, probably Doctor Strange is going to get a time stone again. Now, is this a recent thing? Um, because in the comics recently they had people who had the stones and Wolverine had one of them. I, I, I think the Infinity Watch is kind of a revolving door. Okay. Uh, but uh, I know it's gone back at least since the, the 80s, if not, okay. if not farther. Um, yeah. But I have like one Infinity Watch comic. So it's definitely something that's been around. But, um, Infinity War. Because I don't think people realize how powerful Thanos is. Yeah. For instance, spoiler alert, if you haven't read Civil War II, uh, in Civil War II, uh, Thanos tries to go after one of the stones, mm -hmm. and he kills some pretty, oh, yeah. and injures and maims some pretty major, obliterates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like deal, some right. pretty major characters without any of these stones. So he's a pretty powerful guy, just a la carte, yeah. as is. Uh, natural, however you want to say it. So with his stones, yep. And I feel like it's gonna. I love Captain Marvel. Don't get me wrong. I feel like it's. I just really am interested to see how they beat him with like half of the people. Right. Decimated. Well, we'll get into more of that. Gosh, uh, it gives me anxiety almost. Uh, I think about uh, later it. Date, we're gonna wrap it up this time, but uh, uh, check us out on uh, Facebook, Twitter. I think we're on Instagram. Everything. Yeah. Tigerbox.net and obviously on YouTube. Uh, if you'd like to help us out and give us some money, <laughs> it's a terrible way to ask for that. Give me money. <laughs> we do have a Patreon, so we can uh, try to make things better and get more stuff done. You can check us out patreoncom slash Talkiebox. So any final thoughts? If you guys donate two hundred dollars by next month, Dave will enter the next show wearing no pants. I might do that anyway. You gotta incentivize them. <laughs> <laughs>
We should do, do that. We should make that a thing from now on. Pantsless Tuesdays or whatever? Like, strip donations. <laughs> I don't think you can do that on YouTube. I don't know. We'll have to look into the bylaws and whatnot. $200 oh, we'll and I'll shave into mutton chops. Ooh. I would pay $200 for that. Go ahead. I mean, I don't have $200 <laughs> at this exact moment, but I All right. would. Well, that being said, good night, everybody. Hi.